Hello everybody, and welcome to episode 3 of the Level Builder series. Today we're going to be taking a look at discovering how to build levels, save levels, and then load them. All of this is done by using uh, INI files and text files. So before we get started and look into the code, I just need to tell you guys that this episode is going to be a little bit more intensive than the pre previous two and I already have the code written out. You, I'll just explain the code and you guys can type it out yourself so I'm not really going to be typing anything. And also I should give you a quick overview of how the system works because I built an entire system to do this. Okay so I'll just create a new note. So there are three pre-made levels and then you can have up to six, six player created levels, okay? So in total there's nine different levels and you access levels by pressing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So when someone presses a button it switches the level that they're on, okay? So this is all kind of more basic stuff but the but it gets into this. So I have a data main.ini file and this stores the level or actually it stores the So we have this sort of file right here, a ini file, and this stores the numbers number of levels that we have. It's also going to store each level's name and then it's going to store each level's author. And then what we're going to have is we're going to have um, name of the level dot txt. And then this will have an encoded grid. So let me explain this to you. So when someone creates a new level, it and you press S to save your levels. That's how I have it set up. So when you press S, it'll increase the number of levels inside of here. You will have to name the level. So the level will have a name, and then you will be the author of the level. So all of this is added to the INI file, and then it creates it creates a text file on the computer, and the name of the text file is the name of the level, and then so you so it'll create a new grid as well. And this will just be an empty grid, and then it'll automatically save the grid. And the grid, the grid gets encoded, and all encoded means is kind of like the numbers are kind of jumbled up, and it'll be encoded into the grid, or it'll be encoded into the text file. So then, if we want to switch levels, all we have to do is figure out what the name of the level is, and then all we need to do is just find the level's text file, and then we open that, we decode the grid, that's inside of there and then we save or we set the grid that we are using to the decoded grid alright and this is all being accessed through text files and INI files so it's just kind of a system that I created for us to do it like this so let's get into this so first of all we need to change the name of the script to script load grid to level that's just one of the scripts we had before and I changed the name of the room to room underscore level just because every single um, level is going to be in the same room. So instead of calling this room level 1, it's a lot easier to just have it room level because all the levels will be in the same room. So for this episode, we're only going to be looking at the create event inside controller game because there's a lot of code to get through and next episode is going to have the rest of it. So let's get started. Alright, so I have this create event here, and let's look at this. So I created a new variable called global.createdLevels equals 3. So like I was saying before, there are three pre-made levels. So if someone just downloads this game from online somewhere, and they just load it up, they're going to have the three levels that are already pre-made. Alright, okay, so now like I was talking about before, we're going to open this INI file, and we're going to read a reel. So what this means is that we're we're getting a number from the INI file. Oh, and I should also just mention real quick <clears throat> that the open function, if if this file does not exist, it automatically creates it. 
and then it just makes an empty file. And then this read reel, it's looking in the settings section, and the specific value that it's trying to access is the created levels. And then if we don't get a number back, then the default value we'll just have is negative one. So if someone's uh, just opening this as a new file that's never been created before, it'll just be negative one. And we put this in variable C. So if C equals negative one, so if the file is just created, then it'll write in here global.created levels. So it'll write that there are three levels. But if it's a different number, then that means that someone's already saved the level and they've already written inside of this file how many levels there are. So we just need to access that, <clears throat> how many levels there are. And then we can just close. <clears throat> so once you're done using a file, you always want to close it. And you should always be remembering to close it when you're done with it because you can run into problems if you're not closing your files when you're done using them. Okay, so next up is an array. So this is a different uh, sort of data storage structure that we're using now. And it has an X value and a Y value, basically. And then it has a specific number or whatever. It's like the other data structures, but it's just a little bit different. So for the X, it's the index of the array number. So it's the specific level that we want to access. Okay? And then X and all these X's and Y's always start at zero. So then if the Y equals zero, it's the name of the level, and it's and then remember, the name of the level is the same thing as the name of the file, which has the grid, okay? And then for if y equals 1, that's the author. Again, we need to have an author for each of our levels. <clears throat> and then that's accessed from the data main file up here, okay? And then y equals 2. That's the actual grid. That's the .txt file, or the text file. And so here's kind of an example of what the encoded grid might do. So you have values 1, 0, and 1, and then it just jumbles it up to all of this stuff. And of course, we can't read this. We don't need to, because whenever we want to use it, we just decode it. So then it's taking that jumbled up information, and it's putting it into a format that we can actually use inside our game. All right? So now we need to open that text file that I was talking about. But actually, this is a different situation. We're not opening a text file that's saved anywhere. It's in the included files. So we're going to get into that a little bit later. But basically, we have these included files. So what I did is I played the game, I saved some levels, and then all you have to do is press insert included file, and then find the .txt file, and then you have that file, and then once you selected the file, you can change the name of it to F underscore summer. And then that'll be set as your pre-made level. Okay? And then you can just make the level whatever you want. So these included files, when someone downloads this game, they will get these included files with the computer or with their game that they downloaded. All right? So we're just opening the included file. And then we are... Uh, setting the array values We're just setting it. We're not accessing anything because these are pre-made so we just already know what they are Okay, and then we're creating an empty grid for the for the value where the grid needs to be and then we're using DS grid read so this is the f function that decodes All right, it decodes the grid So then when we read this file this has the encoded grid in it and then it decodes it and then where does it place it? It places it onto the empty grid because this is the empty grid and it's stored in here and then this is the same value again that's right here. All right, it's kind of complicated to understand but going over it a few times can always help. And then we just close that and then we do the same thing right here, okay? So look at this. It's the same thing but it's F2 because it needs to be a different file and then we're looking through the walls file. It's the second included file, okay? And then we do the same thing for the third file here. And actually, I think that's an extra space. Okay, so same thing there. Now, this is a little bit different. So we have the three pre-made levels, but if someone has more than those levels, then they've obviously played the game and created their own levels. So then their created levels value will be higher than three. So we need to loop through all of the values that they have, because they can have up to nine levels, 
So if they have more than three, then we need to look through the files and we need to download the grid and, or decode the grid and put it into our game. And we also need to figure out what the level name is and what the level author is. So then we can open the INI file and then find out what the level name is and what the level author is. And I'll show you this code in case you're typing it out. All right. And then default is just error. You should never get error, but if you do, then we'll need to look through our code and figure out a way to fix it. And then we can have the array height 2D. So yeah, that's just the A value here. Okay, I'm kind of backtracking, but yeah, okay. So let's continue. So I have the I and I close here, and then now we need to open the file, and we need to open the name of the level, which has the jumbled up grid, remember? So we open up this value, and then this is going to be the name of the level, okay? So we're opening up this .txt, so the f text file for it. And then we're creating a grid, and then we're decoding the grid, and we're putting that into that uh, level array value again. And then we're just closing the file, okay? So all of this code is just setting up our entire game for us. And then this down here is the same, but I deleted a line right below this, all right? And then the only thing different here is that now we want some values because we need some values to keep track of which level we're currently looking at when we're playing the game, okay? So if you're playing the game, you can switch between level 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. And what we do is when you press a button, it's going to change the value of the selected grid number. So if you want to look at level 3, then you'll press the 3 button, and then that 3 button will do global.selected grid number equals 3. All right? And then we need... So that's just deciding what the grid number is. It doesn't really do anything. We need to change the grid, because the grid is what actually shows you, remember? That's where all the blocks are stored. So we need to be able to see those blocks, so we just need to have the selected grid equal to the grid number of the level array because if you look up here remember that this value is storing the grid yeah and then we're getting the decoded grid so it has a decoded grid in this value so inside the array we're storing an entire actual grid okay all right that was a lot of stuff to get through but i hope you learned something the next video we'll be talking about the other things we need to set up in order for this to work because we also have some scripts here and then we have a, a quite a few buttons that you can press. Look here. Look at all these buttons. So yeah, we need to go through that. So well, thank you for watching, and I hope you'll keep up with the series.